The headlines are enough to make you want to down a few. Widmer closed its pub. Burnside Brewing said it couldn't pay its rent. And Bridgeport, the OG of IPAs, said so long after decades of serving up suds. It's sad for a lot of people. Tony Roberts is the co-executive director of the Oregon Brewers Guild. Bridgeport's closure, he says, really stung. It started in the 80s when a handful of craft brewers were popping up around Portland. Now, he says, it's a very different world. What we have in Portland is, and, and statewide really, is a hyper-competitive market in the craft beer industry. And the numbers back that up. Check out these stats from the OLCC. Bridgeport Brewing was licensed as a brew pub public house. Right now, there are 372 of those in Oregon, most of them in Portland. That's up from 225 just five years ago and 114 10 years ago. So what does that mean? For most craft breweries, you need to grow and stay small. Sam Holloway, a professor at the University of Portland, literally studies the craft beer industry. His take, Bridgeport started at a time when success meant getting cans into stores. Today, with so many beers out there, that's often a losing game. If you're tooled for wholesale, that means you're really tooled to make large volumes of fewer and fewer products at a time when consumers want smaller volumes of more and more products. And staying small isn't an easy mold to stick with, admits Ben Parsons. The rub is we've kind of done it to ourselves as an industry, you know, like... I'm partially to blame, you know, in some regards. We wouldn't go that far, but Holloway points out Parsons Bear Lick Brewing in Southeast Portland fits what he deems the new model. It's small, with lots of choices, sold in-house. Plus, Parsons points out, ambiance is key. We can come in and you know, have the entire bear look experience over our bar. Front of house is like our biggest, uh, hospitality is our biggest focus. And that's huge, says Holloway, for breweries hoping to thrive in Portland's healthy but competitive market, which he points out has changed consumers. Brace yourself. Because it's so good for the consumers, they're very promiscuous, which means they're always looking for what's new. That description was so funny to hear. All right, Barely, by the way, we should point out, they actually are expanding just very slowly, very meticulously. They're opening, guys, a new food cart pod, and there's a beer garden. It's called the Barley Pod. It opened recently. It's at 60th and Halsey. So they can grow, just not at the rate that Bridgeport did 30 years ago. Yeah. It's just too different. Well, instead of promiscuous, I rather like the word eclectic. <laughs> we, we savor variety yeah. of taste. Yeah, it's not quite as uh, hilarious <laughs> to hear on the news, though, because they did give us at Barelick some party favors oh, how to nice cheers that. Oregon and Portland's healthy beer scene. Oh, you brought one for all of oh, us? Oh, I brought one for all of us. I was going to give one two to Two for you, Zach, actually. Been running the <laughs> no, two for Laurel, per usual. Is this happening? I'm, I'm, is this happening right now? Okay, I'm doing this. It's happening right it's, now. Let's go Hail. for it. You know what? Our bosses are watching, and hello to you. Hello to all of you. <laughs> all right. I, I assume this was approved. I'll just I know. We'll I'll assume approval. Yeah. Hey, all right, well, cheers, cheers, Portland cheers. Beer Market. And you know what? The competition does breed some of the best beer I've ever had in my life. We have amazing beer. All of them said today, it's the best time, the best city in which to be a beer lover. So we That's can enjoy good. that. Well, I, I think we should toast to, yeah. to beer, to Valentine's Day.